originally I was meant to be with you all in person at this symposium on pharmacology, uh, the history of psychedelics and countercultural activities. The way that the media actually try and distort and oppress the more radical thinkers and experimenters of each time. As irony would have it, I cannot be with you in person unless you count the digital image as real and that's open to a lot of conjecture. Uh, I'm an exile basically, I'm a fugitive in a sense and I'm a fugitive for my exploration of sense and senses. As I recall before I left Great Britain in November 1991 some of the topics that were going to be discussed at this symposium were such things as the way the mass media had treated uh, pharmacon, psychedelic drugs, consciousness expansion since the 50s and 60s till the present day, the way that the management company, as I tend to call all governments now, or government, M-E-A-N, management, the idea that in fact all that's left now is no longer a political system, but a system of managing, of getting by, and of managing and controlling and directing all of you and ourselves, and those selves include our concept of ourself, S-E-L-F. These words are important, and breaking them down is important because basically we're talking about disorder, disorderly conduct, basically, of which I hope to be an ongoing, continual protagonist and explorer. The main intention of uh, appearing with you in this form is as a gesture, basically, and a connection, and also as a demonstration of what, in a sense, is our major weapon. So what we're now dealing with over here with people we've been networking, over here being somewhere else on this very large globe, somewhere a lot larger than the little pimple of politics called Great Britain, somewhere full of trees, what can I say? And what we're basically trying to deal with now is where you go from the point of a psychedelic community, what happens next? And so what we're really talking about is evolution the possibility that it exists, and if so, the way it can be facilitated. Next year is the 50th anniversary of Albert Hoffman's bicycle ride in Switzerland. I think it's April 16th, and there will be a celebration and a memorial service, in a sense, where people will ride bicycles along the same route and probably imbibe illegal chemicals and recreate en masse the revolutionary moment that happened after the research into ergotamine. Fifty years, it's not much really. Hardly uh, less than communism lasted or a lot of different cults of this century have lasted. Probably a little less than capitalism will last just because they've got the biggest guns. But we have to sit back and address the question of what happened those 50 years ago and is it relevant in any way whatsoever? And my answer to that obviously would be yes it is. It's relevant enough for people like Dr. Timothy Leary to be as of now still banned from Great Britain. And now of course by devious means the new, the new system of banning myself as well. It's quite weird being in this position, this situation, trying to explain things and be uh, spontaneous with you when, of course, this is a contrived situation, a contrived medium. But here we are, together at last. Psychedelics, 50 years. To me, one of the big keys, the big points that should be made about this is 
that throughout human history, from the times of the cavemen in the caves and the beginning of the concept of the keepers of the magic knowledge, the secret knowledge, and the namers of the names, there's always been some form of basic hierarchical system, the chief, the priest, the chief, the shaman, the goddess, so on. And there were the assigned and trained keepers of the secret knowledge. The secret knowledge normally being that received through revelation and illumination by seers. Now all those three words refer to light, illumination, revelation, visionary, seer. So what we're talking about is what people see and what is contained within light. It's not a verbal language, it's an image language. It's the language of light, of lasers, and now in this time, digital language. So nice to speak to you like this. It's very relaxing. So in those ancient days, people would find different ways to be intoxicated. And they would find different plants and different organic substances which would take them out of themselves into mystical realms, different paths of enlightenment, which of course is a word en light and meant means literally in light is meant. To be in light is what is meant for us as humane beings. And the E on humane I put there for the word evolution. So we return to the concept of light and evolution many times. The possessors of and the controllers of illumination, the visionary experience, basically became the feudal lords, the owners of land, and of, by owning the land, owning, in a sense, the earth, or trying to claim the earth itself as their possession. Now, we all know that's not possible, and we've all seen the results of this possession of the earth. It's just not scientifically possible to maintain the status quo in a state of flux. For a long time we've been saying that Britain, Great Britain, was actually still a feudal society and that basically the police and the army and the church serve the ends and the potential and continuing power of a ruling elite. That's a basic simplicity, that's a basic thing we all say we know, but in fact, to what extent is this buried in us? To what extent is it part of our DNA imprint? How much do we actually become submissive to a dream that we do not subscribe to? So what you're asking is, can DNA be controlled? How is, I'm it, asking, how is it manipulated? Yeah, is DNA controlled, or is it that we are simply controlled by DNA? If we are controlled by DNA, by all the cultural means which go with it, the imprints, the ways that we're trained to behave, think, respond, if we actually are controlled by that, then the key to evolution and change, the key to disintegrating this management company in order to rebuild a global community is to access the language of DNA and thereby travel back and forth in order to facilitate changes in ourselves, to re-mind ourselves, to take this mind we inherit and build it according to our own parameters. Now, just as people assume that something like a computer game or digital information and virtual reality are ways of liberating ourselves, when in fact they are not, and they are not because the programmer is the one who decides the limits. Their imagination then needs their idea and concept of exploration is where each virtual reality program will end. In the same way, 
there is a program in DNA which also has its limits, and which also has been gradually imprinted by thousands of years of social control, of management. Both these systems have to be shattered. All systems have to be fragmented and shattered, disordered, as I said, in order for us to have any chance of becoming ourselves or disintegrating into something more incredible, an evolutionary step. That's what we're aiming for. That's what I believe we're aiming for. Nothing less will do. The visionary experience, the moment, <coughs> sorry, the moment when we no longer exist as ourselves and become what people call light. So what I'm saying is that even with psychedelic drugs, You are limited by the internal programming, the imprints, the conditioning, call it what you will, the DNA and the environment. That means to me that psychoactive enhancers, psychedelic experiences are not in any way apolitical because when you drop this chemical bomb into your neurology, your neurosystem, you are triggering, accessing and disassembling. You are cutting up all your previous inherited perceptions of what we sadly call reality. That is a political act, make no mistake. And if you need evidence that it's political, think about the first wave of the psychedelic revolution or evolution, when communes, gay rights, all kinds of social and political and artistic and musical and graphic and commercial developments took place. This was no accident. This was actually inevitable. And it was these spin-off manifestations which were the real threat to the management company. If you'll go along with me for a minute and accept that this is a political as well as a personal evolutionary arena, I'll try and explain why I feel, with my experience, that it is so important to continue and to expand upon this path. When the people who own the land and the resources and the capital suddenly discovered that their lackeys in the ordered churches and their slave priests and priestesses of pseudo-illumination were being undermined. They legislated. Why? Because for the first time in humane history, millions of humane beings had had access to that mystical experience, to the visionary bank. This has never happened before. It has always been something kept for the elite. It was never democratized. No one knows the results. No one knows the implications, good or bad. But it's out of Pandora's box. It's out of the rites of Eleusis. It's out of the Catholic communion. It's out of the Mormon church marriage ceremony with the naked girls being anointed by the elders. It's out of all those safe, ordered, controlled spaces and it's on the streets. Everyone suddenly has a shamanic experience for a couple of dollars or one pound fifty. For better or worse, prepared or not, that's what's happening. It's like putting an electric shock through the community of unknown proportions with unknown results. 
the only known result is it's stealing power from the elite, from the feudal lords, and it's re-empowering, or in a sense, for the first time, truly self-empowering the people on the earth. Let me just make one thing clear personally, which is, I'm not saying this is either good or bad. I'm not making a judgment. I'm stating an observation, my own personal subjective observation. But I think it's worth noting. And I think it's pretty much the same as television appearing around the same time en masse. If television was a drug like thalidomide, it would have been carefully tested and checked and regulated by what do you have in England now? Um, I don't know, the health service or someone here, they have the FDA. Yeah. See, I can't even remember my own home country, thank goodness.